Hello everyone. Um, today I, I want to share about waking up and being serious with God. <laughs> because any time now, I mean, it's been said by so many people, but any time now, you see, for anyone that's not prepared, for, for everyone that's not walking repent, you know, a repentant life. I don't want to make it through this time. I will tell you one thing that it's been said, you know, that uh, the church will be persecuted and all that. If it's true. But you shouldn't fear that when you're a Christian. Keep living your life, you know, as a Christian. Don't turn down because the world says this. I mean, we're going to be persecuted in each and everything. But let me tell you something. We're not going to be persecuted as we 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 imagine. We're not going to be persecuted as we as we perceive it. It's going to be very very subtle. You know, like certain rules will change. They won't directly hit. They won't directly hit at people's faith, you know. But certain rules will be implemented by governments. That will honestly press people of faith and the whole talk about the rapture you know people talk about the rapture and like it's gonna happen God is going to take his people then the tribulation begins and I tell you something you guys don't don't wait for that do not be deceived there's no rapture there's no rapture as an event that people are going to disappear at some point. But the rapture, I believe, is your death. And that death of us being caught up with in the sky with God, with Christ, is, it is, a, it is a, a stretch of time. I believe it's been happening. It's already happening it is happening and it's going to happen until a particular day there is a day talked about in the book of Daniel chapter 12 verse 11 okay let me read from let me read from chapter verse 9 to 11 let me read from verse 9 until 13. So it says that. And he said, Go thy way, Daniel, for the words are closed up and sealed till the time of the end. Many shall be purified and made white and tried, but the wicked shall do wickedly, and none of the wicked shall understand. But the wise shall understand. And from that and from that time that the daily sacrifice shall be taken away, and the abomination that makes desolate set up, there shall be a thousand two hundred and ninety days. Blessed is he that waits and comes to the to the thousand. 305 and 60 days but go thy way till the end till the end be for thou shalt rest and stand in thy lot at the end of the days so in these last days it is only the wise that are going to see this these things happen but the wicked won't understand The wicked are those that live in sin, that enjoy doing sin. Now, I want you, I want you to understand. The wise is he that observes the word of God, the times of God, that regards God, that follows God. That is the wise one. And then there's a sinner. A sinner is he that walks in sin, now and then, and repents. You know, falls back, comes back. You know, double-minded. 
now the wicked is he that that enjoys that loves what they do i mean they, they totally live in sin they don't even go back and forth back and forth now the evil one is he that enjoys to do wickedness that if that person enjoys doing wickedness so such people will never know they will never know this is the time for us to stand up to stop struggle you know these struggles of seen the things that people are struggling with fighting others trying to impress people i mean i mean you know you know the things people are doing now you know and he says that in in on verse 11 that and from the time that the daily sacrifice shall be taken away and the abomination that makes desolate set up there shall be a thousand two hundred and ninety days the daily sacrifice Oh my god. You know there's a daily sacrifice made in heaven for us. And that daily sacrifice is the blood of Christ that is poured upon the earth every day, every day. But a time is going to come and that sacrifice is stopped, like the blood of Christ will stop. You know what that means? That means that there will be no holy spirit on the earth after those days. That there will be no holy spirit poured out oh, to everyone <laughs> that is very very scary that daily sacrifice is that blood of christ that gives you the grace to walk away from sin but now those days won't be made long it says that it will be 1,290 days. One thousand two hundred and ninety days. If you look at that, one thousand two hundred ninety days. That's one thousand two hundred ninety days. Let me try to calculate that. Let me try to calculate that. 1,290 days. Divide by 3, 365. Those are three and a half years. And he talks about another time. Mm. He talks about another. That blessed is he that waits and comes to a thousand three hundred and five and thirty thirty days he says this other one is a thousand three hundred and fifty three days divide by three sixty five Hmm. three years and and, and and some months so this stuff is going to happen for about three years this great tribulation is going to happen for about three years and at that time it is going to be so tough that you won't have the holy spirit if you didn't accept christ from before you will have to move and to impress God by what you know, by the word you have read. You can imagine how hard those days are going to be. And we can see it happening now. See, the whole plan of Satan is to get rid of the Holy Spirit and the whole church. I believe that, I believe that the people that are going to stay during that time are going to be people given a second chance these that have been double-minded in church these that are double-minded in church these that are they're neither warm they're, they're neither cold neither hot they are warm they can't make up their mind that is a time when they're going to be tested but the ones who have proven themselves to follow christ 
he's gonna rapture them away like i said the rapture is not an event and it doesn't even exist it's not an event like it's gonna happen on a tuesday it is a period and that period what is regarded as your rapture is your death and that is already happening right now christ is already taking his people and he he has already marked you know all the people out so you can imagine I mean, look at the life that we lead right now. I mean, people are still struggling with corruption. People still struggle with money. People still struggle with self-control. And time is time is running out. You know, the clock is ticking. Do you know what it means to live in a life where there's no Holy Spirit? Like, there's no voice to guide you. Like, like hey, what you're doing is wrong. And imagine living that life and you're being pursued. You do not have the mark of the beast. I mean, there are going to be laws. I know they're going, they're going to use laws. Satan is very smart. Let me tell you something. Satan is very smart. He's not going to attack the church directly. First of all, he has infiltrated the church. Now, all the pastors, most of them are going to be his. If not all, actually, if not all, most of, most of them, like 98%, the church is going to be his. And when you run to the church to tell them about the mark of the beast, the pastor will tell you, hey, this is the law. We can't disobey the law. The Bible says, uh, give what belongs to Caesar and this is, you understand? The time is going to come when that saying no longer applies. You know? When you run to the church, it's like you're running from a snake and you fall into, into the lion's grip, you know? You run from the lion's grip, you find a gator or... A crocodile. So you want to be that kind of situation, like everywhere you run, you're dead. They'll chase people from the streets. They might probably chase you, chase you from from your house where you stay. And like here we stay in this complex. If those days come and people here in this complex are still around and they don't take the mark, they'll be chased out. Why do you, why do I say that? Because they will require them of their documentations and to show their rightful, you know. You might be an owner, but they might say that all this stuff is going to go under a new system. They have to keep information a certain way, you know. And if you're not willing to do that, then you have to move out. Or you have to sell. And you can't sell when you do not have the mark of the beast. You understand? So that means you're going to be homeless. This is how it's going to be. Like, people are working right now. They're working so hard to go and build these houses and do all this stuff, buy all these cars. A time is going to come when you can't even touch the things you worked hard for. I feel sorry for the people that will be around then. I pray to God I'm not around. Though, I'd love to witness those days, you know. But... Christian has nothing to fear if you are following God. The scriptures I read right now that really scare me, they scare the bricks off of me. I mean, I read scriptures that say, work out your salvation with fear and trembling, you know? Who says that? I mean, that shows you this is how bad this battle is. I mean, this is how serious it is to God. I mean, if that's not scary to you, then I don't know what can really scare you. I'm telling you. You know, this life is like Christ is like go to any extent to fight for your salvation. I mean, if you see. See how these people died, you know. Now, like, uh, is it Stefan or Stephen, the guy who died, and they were stoning him? Imagine being hit with rocks straight on your skull, but all you're doing, you're looking up to the sky, you're like, Oh my god, Lord, forgive them. That's the kind of people God is searching for. But I'm here to just wake you up, you know, I'm here to poke you, to pinch you, to pinch you out of your comfort. And ask you that, hey, are you ready? 
if you went right now, are you ready? If, if you got into a car accident, if you ruptured away right now, are you ready? The Bible says that two, might, two will be grinding at the, at the stone and one will, will, will be taken and the other will stay. Two will be at the house top. One will stay and the one will go. I shared a dream I had about the nuclear apocalypse that's going to happen. And it's going to happen. But I saw that that was the basis of building the, the, the new world order. Like the whole world was destroyed. People died. And I understood that many people were going to die at that time. And that is the time people are go many people of God are going to go away. You know, many people are going to be raptured. You know? People will be together. Explosions are going to kill some. Some will stay. Some will survive. Some will go. Might be driving a car, you too. It's you and your wife. And you knock. Get involved in this fatal, very, very, very sick and deadly accident. And you die and she stays. You've been raptured away. The nuclear explosion that was in Japan. Uh, I think the, it was uh, Hiroshima, you know. Some died, some stayed. How is that not being raptured away, you know? If you read this, if you read and understand the Bible, there's nothing like an event called the rapture. There's nothing like that. I mean, people are being deceived so that you, you, you focus on this one event rather than tonight, that you might, you might die tonight. I want to put you to bring you to the realization that you have to be ready anytime. I mean, an earthquake can happen, and you know, it's your demise. We hear of all these uh, weather catastrophes like all over the world, mostly in America, you know, the hurricanes, um, all these strange winds, you know taking and destroying thousands and tens of thousands, you know. Oh, man. Guys. If you read the whole of Daniel chapter 12, it will give you some kind of insight, but imagine a world without God, without the Holy Spirit. That's going to be literal. That's literally going to be hell on earth. Because the Holy Spirit won't be there. You have to, to move on what you knew. And the thing is, you're going to stay behind because God is giving you another chance now to prove to him. Because he, he used love, he used all this. He, he sent his prophets, he sent all these people on YouTube, he sent your parents, he sent so and so, he sent friends. He sent your own family to wake you up. But you didn't. If you read Matthew chapter, I think, 24, it talks about those last days and it says when those things are happening now that is the testing of the saints let me try and search for that Say something about the trying of your faith. That's when the trying of your faith will be. If you read somewhere in Matthew chapter 20, the trying. Uh, can't seem to, to find anything, but... It's quite long. I wouldn't. I, I wouldn't want to read that. But 
I wouldn't want to go and read through that. It's so long. But if you read Matthew chapter 24. Um, let's see. Okay, let's read verse 20. Uh, chapter 24 from verse 8. All these are the beginning of sorrows. Then shall they deliver you up to be afflicted and shall kill you, and you shall be hated of all nations for my name's sake. And then shall many be offended and shall betray one another and shall hate one another. And many false prophets shall rise and deceive many. And because iniquity shall abound, the love of many shall wax cold. But he that shall endure to unto the end, the same shall be saved. And this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in all the world for a witness unto all nations, and shall the end come. When therefore shall see the abomination of desolation spoken of by Daniel the prophet in Daniel 12, where we read, stand in the holy place. Whosoever readeth, in brackets, him, let him understand. Then let them which are in Judea flee into the mountains. Let him which is on the housetop not come down to take anything out of his of his house. You know? And talks about your father talks about um, your flee not to be in the Sabbath. You know, it talks about you not fleeing on the Sabbath, to be lucky that you don't flee on the Sabbath. And then he says in um, verse 22, And except those days shall be shortened, there should no flesh be saved. But for the, for the elect's sake, those days shall be shortened. So those days should have been long, but they'll be shortened. You know, like as we've seen in Daniel, that there will be like three years, three and a half years. And um, he continues to say, do not be deceived by all these people. There shall come so many. Um, yeah. So later on in verse 40, he says, Then shall two in the field, shall be in the field, and one shall be taken, and the other left. Two women shall be grinding at the mill, the one shall be taken, and the other left. You know? And, um, sorry, there's a little distraction here. So anyways, there are four, uh, 40, 42, watch there are four, for you know not what hour your Lord does come, it means you know no, not, you do not know the hour he comes, I mean you do, you do not know when you will die, you don't, you don't know when this will happen to you, when you will be with someone else and one is taken away and the other ha stays, you know. Because I want you to understand, God is very smart. He can't make the rapture be one event, you know, one wholesome event, you know, for the whole world to see. Then people will know that this is a rapture. It's going to happen and people won't even know. Like it's already happening and people don't know. They don't realize it. When someone dies and they go, they've been raptured away. And people don't see this. But let me tell you something. <laughs> yeah, this, is so, this is so interesting and so scary, you know. That all these things are already happening and we do not know. So, and he says, verse 43, But know this, that if the good man of the house had known in what watch the thief would come, he would have watched and would not have suffered his house to be broken. Therefore, be you also ready, for in such an hour as you think, not the Son of Man comes. Who then is a faithful and wise servant 
whom his Lord has made ruler over his household to give them meat in due season. Blessed is that servant whom his Lord, when he comes, shall find so doing. So he talks about, I just don't want that verse that says, it talks about the trying, the trying. There's a scripture that talks about the trying of here is the testing of, of saints. Is it Matthew? Or is it in Revelation? You know, sometimes I read the Bible and <laughs> forget some of this. Yeah, it's Revelations, the book of Revelation, um, chapter 13, verse 10. It says, He that leads into cap captivity shall go into captivity. He that kills with a sword must be killed with a sword. Here is the patience and the faith of the saints. Revelation 14, 12 again. Here is the patient, the patience of of the saints here are they that keep the commandments of God and the faith of Jesus Christ so in these days of, of uh, in these last days you know the tribulation that will happen that is when your patience and your testing you know your your, your faith and your, your patience will be tried because for the longest time we have been saying yeah I trust God I do I do love God now this is the time that God is testing us, our patience. When people are pursuing us, we already happen. It's already happening. You know? And let me tell you something. We have to be so strong. We have to let's not give up, you know. Let's not give in to the enemy. Let's not lose ourselves into this world, you know. I said earlier and I kept I will keep saying this. To follow God. Even if it means to be broke and eat from, from the streets, do it. It doesn't matter. Because you're saving your soul. Because what good is it to gain the whole world and lose your soul? I mean, we live in this world not even more than a hundred years. It's very hard for people to even live past a hundred these days. The, 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 strong, the, the highest people live is like 96 and those are like a few a few exceptional cases, you know. And then they're wearing diapers, sitting in wheelchairs, you know, walking with walking steel. I wouldn't like, want to live such a life. We have to repent. We have to walk away from the sins that we struggle with. The things that we are doing. Behind closed doors. And get serious with Christ. You know, we talk about this thing and I'm telling you, Daniel 12 said that only the wise will see these things. How I pray that you're the wise one. But the wicked, they will not even see. They will not even know. I mean, these things will happen, but they won't even know. They'll just look around and to them it's normal life. And if you ever speak to anyone and they can't see these things, that is the wicked one. <laughs> because the Bible says it. The wise are seeing it now. And to show you that you are seeing it now, that means you're with God and you're observing the times. And you should thank God for that. I want to thank God for that. I want to thank the Holy Spirit for that. I want to thank the Lord Jesus Christ for that. You know? These things that are going to happen in the world that, I mean, let me tell you, these things are going to happen in the world. You know, things might happen and they affect only one country or one continent. The other moves on. That's the saddest thing about life. Like you see in the Middle East, in Afghanistan, in, in 
in Iraq, in all those countries there, in the Middle East, all those countries have been destroyed with war. And life moves on. In America, there's some people, that, the, the American government that attacked them, they're moving on with their economy. Look at Syria. It was a very normal nation, very beautiful country. Right now, gone. No one cared. Life moved on. So many African countries that have been destroyed. The DR, the DRC, what's happening in Uganda right now. I mean, but no one cares. The UN doesn't care. It won't go and save anyone. If they do not care. This shows you that these people are in the same bed. You can't trust them with your life. Let them kill you. And you move on with life. And you make it to heaven. You know, the Bible says that do not resist evil. I mean... If someone wants to take everything you have, let them take it. I mean, where are they going to take it? The world is going to be, you know, folded and wrapped up and thrown in the lake of fire with each and everything they have stolen from you. And in heaven you'll get new stuff that no one has ever used, no one has ever touched, no one has ever unwrapped. You'll be there to unwrap your own stuff, you know. But this, this life, it's, it's sad, you know. It's sad the petty things that keep us away from God. They're so, 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 so petty like this. You see people fight over... Well, someone will say a car is something so big. But you see people fight over a car, over a house, over a home. Let the person take their home. Are they going to eat the home? Are they, they will die, they will leave the home behind. You know, the funniest thing about life is that someone might struggle. Someone might go to um, like court, let's say that someone might go to court fighting for billions and billions over a case. And then after they win the case, they finally get the money. And when they get the money, what next? And funny enough, someone might even die. I heard of a story of, of um, a mother that had 10 kids. And she had this one smart one. So she concentrated on him. She was like, hey. This, this boy, he's so smart. Let me invest all I have in this boy. So, she didn't invest in the other ones. They were, well, according to world standards, they were dense. So she didn't invest in them. She paid for this one all the way to university. She sold everything she had. And this guy, he became a doctor, you know. He graduated. Well, he was going to graduate. So he finished... On his graduation day, three day, two days to his graduation day, the guy fell sick. And on the graduation day itself, the guy died. Then you're like, all this money, all this time, she invested all these thoughts over all these years. Gone in three days. Indeed. We should only trust God. I've already reached 30 minutes, so I'll close from this point. But I pray that this wakes you up, this encourages you, this uplifts you. You better reckon we're in the last days. We we, we are in those last days. And and the rapture, as foretold, it is already happening. I'll tell you that it's already happening. So do not be deceived. There is some kind of event. It is already happening. I have seen the Lord mark his people because, you know, I saw, I, I saw it, 2000, 2017, I saw it, 2017, 16, 2016, I guess, I saw it. The Lord showed me that he had, he, he, he was marking his people. And we are already in that time. And this whole stuff, they're telling you that the coronavirus, the enemy's plan, uh, the COVID-19, the enemy, the devil. These things, they'll tell you that the devil's plans, the devil's what. Let me tell you, Satan is nothing compared to God. All these things, God just lets them happen. It's all just happening because God has a, he has a time he appointed Satan to be punished. And for those that say that there is no time in, he in the heavens... <clears throat> 
or in eternity that there is no time in eternity there is time because how could God appoint a time for Satan's punishment when there is no time so there is time and that time is upon you know it's upon him that's why he works so hard because he knows he's running out of his time so you shouldn't fear all these things that oh my god god vaccinated the enemy is gonna kill me he's gonna let him kill you let me tell you all of us are going to be persecuted even me speaking right here even your pastor that pastor that man of god you look up to that seems very strong and grounded in the word he's gonna be persecuted what if he's killed before right before you what would you do if you're looking up to a man but if he loses out and he's like hey i have a family don't kill me don't kill me don't kill me no imagine that no this is the image i have of satan i don't know if any anyone out there has ever watched the movie man from uncle and there was this there was this evil villain the guy that tortured I think he was a he was a, a Nazi or a German guy that had these torture tools he would, he would get out this torture uh, kit with knives scissors and oh he, he had <laughs> yeah, that guy had items you know tools that he used to torture people but I remember when when um what's the guy's name Henry Henry Cavill I think the, the main actor in the movie when he broke free from the chair of torture he got he grabbed the gun and was like now it's your turn that guy said please please forgive me I will never I will tell you anything you want because he knew he knew how bad his tortures were to other people so he was willing not to go through he wasn't willing to go through his own tortures <laughs> not even to save his neck you know he knew so it's the same thing it's the same way i see satan that all this stuff is doing he knows what's coming for him he knows so he's he just wants to in, inflict this kind of pain you know if you've never watched that movie you should go watch it man from uncle and um anyways i'm not so big on movies anymore entertainment but i mean but you know that that's that's life that's life the days are upon us i mean and god is so loving and fair that he wants to give us the right the, you know our reward just justly imagine everyone knew that jesus was coming back on thursday the 28th of june 2031 imagine how the world would be i'm telling you, there will be so many babies so many abortions so so much going on but on the eve on the wednesday everyone will run to church and repent and ask for forgiveness and cleanse themselves but that's not a, a holy person that's not a pure person because christ wants a person who's gonna walk in righteousness whether he's there or, or, or not because he wants it to be your way of life full time yeah you, you don't have to be supervised you don't have to be good good under supervision he wants you to be good whether he is or he is not but people we want we want to live a conditioned life give me this i give you that that's 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 who we are human beings but we thank god that he's he's doing he's doing and he has done a great work in in some of us i mean glorify him for that that's why we come here to share with you people to warn you so we don't want to go to heaven alone we want all of you to go and some of our brethren that are losing it because some of us in the faith are losing it you like christ has taken long without coming well, why do we have to go through all this pain you know i'm here to tell you that it's not only you who's gonna go through it even me i'm gonna go through it my kids everyone has to go through it we have to be refined 
God bless you. This video is too long right now.